party has been hijacked by a selected group of party leaders and elders, government appointees, behind, behind the cutting power brokers and some unscrupulous party apparatchiks. It was my fervent wish, it was my fervent wish to use the vehicle of their party to bring my God-given talents, experience, and knowledge acquired both locally and internationally over a period of 46 years to serve our dear nation, Ghana, at the highest level of executive authority. It is abundantly clear to me that my services and contributions to the party are not appreciated. And that my continual stay in the party will create further tension and divisions, which is an exact replay of the circumstances that led to my decision to resign from the party in 2008. Fellow countrymen and women, under the circumstances, and given the context provided, I wish to use this platform to announce that I'm honorably resigning with immediate effect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV, dear. for a higher Pen Dream TV in Pachos and your first time. I subscribe to channel and found Sabo. I don't manage to set a bear the video. Be a tour. We be first person. I wish you a video. New you pet send a voice note. My I was 0277128777. 0277 128 the entire political landscape of our motherland with a big round of applause let's welcome john alan pedro chamati Please sit. <laughs> Fellow countrymen and women, friends from the media, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me start first by expressing my profound gratitude to you all for accepting my invitation to attend this press conference here today. I give thanks to the Almighty God for his manifold blessings in my life and for his grace and mercy. I wish also to use this platform to express my heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you, particularly the rank and file of the new patriotic party, MPP, who have believed in my vision, who have stood by me through thick and thin, and who have shown an unwavering faith in the promise of a brighter future for Ghana. Your belief in the possibilities of our nation and your dedication to the ideals of progress, 
unity and prosperity have been nothing short of inspiring. It is important for me at the outset to provide a historical context for what has occasioned this press conference today. In 1992, when the new Patriotic Party was established, a group of young, dynamic business executives and professionals came together to establish the Young Executives Forum, YEF, under my chairmanship. The YEF, since 1992, became the financial backbone of the party and provided significant financial resources to support the party in all its endeavors, including providing the seed fund for the purchase of the party's first national headquarters building. As chairman of the YEF, I had the privilege of serving as a member of the National Executive Committee and the National Council of the party. In addition to this, I served as a leading member of various committees of the party. In 1996, after the unsuccessful attempt by the first flag bearer of the party, Professor Albert Edubwain, to win the general elections, the membership of the Young Executive Forum nominated me to contest the 1996 presidential primaries alongside leading personalities such as Professor Edubwain, Mr. J. Kufo, Dr. Jani Salbi, Dr. Kwame Safodu, Mr. J. H. Mensa, and Dr. Jones Oforata. I was prevailed at that time upon by some senior members of the party, in particular, Mr. Akenteng Apiamenka and Mr. Stephen Kreku, both of blessed memory, to sacrifice the opportunity to contest for the leadership of the party and rather support my senior colleague aspirants. From 1996 to 2000, I played a leading role in supporting the bid of the then candidate, J. A. Kufo, to win the general elections and become president of the Republic of Ghana in 2001. <laughs> After refusing appointment as a cabinet minister in the aftermath of the elections. The president then persuaded me to become MPP's first ambassador to the United States of America, a position I served with distinction. I was subsequently appointed in 2003 as Minister for Trade and Industry and Presidential Special Initiatives to implement a new paradigm of economic development which I had introduced in 2001 on the assumption of office by President Kufo. Between 2003 and 2007, I led the government's program for enhancing private sector development and ushering a golden age of business in Ghana. In 2007, I joined a distinguished group of 17 presidential aspirants to contest in the presidential primaries of the MPP. In that election, under very strange circumstances, the electoral process was truncated on the day of the election on account of accusations leveled against me of influencing the course of the elections. This strategy was designed to create disfavor against me in an attempt to diminish my popularity and the massive support I enjoyed amongst the rank and file of the grassroots of the party. In spite of this unfortunate occurrence, however, when the votes were finally counted, Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado came first and I was the runner-up. According to the rules, of the electoral process at that time. The two of us were programmed for a second round ballot. It was in response to this development 
that I made my landmark declaration that to avoid a further deterioration of peace in an already divided party, I would make the supreme political sacrifice not to contest the runoff, but rather support my senior brother, Nana Adudankwe Kufuado, to contest as the flag bearer for MPP. To contest as the flag bearer for MPP in the 2008 general elections. Despite the sacrifice I made to unite the party, as referred to above, there were very serious post-primary attacks on my supporters all over the country and an open show of hostility. Some of my supporters were victims of brutalities and continue to bear the scars of that treatment. I made several representations to the then leadership of the party, drawing the attention to the rancorous and divisive behavior of some elements in the party. Regrettably, however, my representations went unheeded. As a consequence, I gave notice of my decision to resign from the party in protest against the blatant alienation of my supporters, orchestrated by elements aligned to the leadership of the party at that time. The protests and reactions from the rank and file of the party at that time from all over the country compelled the then chairman of the party to constitute a reconciliation committee chaired by the then immediate past chairman of the party, Ambassador Samuel Odoi Sykes. The committee upheld all my submissions and prevailed upon me to rescind my decision to resign, which I did, with a firm promise to address all the contentious issues I had raised in my notice of resignation. Unfortunately, however, all the promises made by the party leadership were never fulfilled, and indeed, the divisive and hostile attacks on my person and my supporters remained for several years thereafter and have continued to date. It is common knowledge that any party member who is associated directly or indirectly with Alan Chemating is treated with disdain and considered an outcast. Fellow countrymen and women, um, I have endured all this resentment. I maintain my integrity within the party throughout the past 15 years. On assumption of office of the MPP in 2017, under the leadership of His Excellency Dana Adudankwa Akufuabu, I was appointed as Minister for Trade in Industry in the first term of the MPP administration and was retained in the same position by the President in the second term. During the past six years, I led the introduction and implementation of some of the most innovative and successful programs of the MPP, including the establishment of the One District, One Factory Initiative, the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area after, with the headquarters of the Secretariat in Ghana, the development of new strategic anchor industries to diversify the economy in Ghana, including the automobile assembly and component manufacturing, the establishment of business resource centers and technology solution centers all over the country to provide comprehensive business development so solutions to micro, small, and medium enterprises. The introduction of the new integrated customs management system, otherwise referred to as UNIPAS, which has significantly enhanced mobilization of government revenue. The establishment of industrial parks, including the flagship 
Greater Kumasi Industrial City and Special Economic Zone. The development of a national export strategy with a target of achieving export revenue of 25 billion United States dollars by 2030. And last but not the least, the introduction of business regulatory reforms and public private dialogue mechanisms to facilitate government's interaction with the private sector. In spite of the limited budget put at my disposal during my tenure as cabinet minister, I was able to deliver significant achievements for the government and my country. Fellow countrymen and women, I believe I have served my country and intend to continue to do so. On the 5th, on the 5th of January 2023, I resigned honorably from my position as Cabinet Minister and declared my intention in a national broadcast to contest the presidential primaries of the NPP. On the 26th of August this year, I participated in the Super Delegates Conference to shortlist the 10 aspirants who had filed their nominations to contest in the primaries. I was selected as one of the five candidates to contest for the main presidential primaries scheduled for the 4th of November 2023. Fellow countrymen and women, after carefully analyzing the results of the Superdelegates Conference, I issued a press statement on the 6th of September this year, declaring my intention to exit the process leading to the presidential primaries. In the run-up to the Superdelegates Conference, the National Council of the Party made some of the most controversial and contentious decisions in the history of our party. They rejected a petition signed by nine out of the ten aspirants requesting for the Superdelegates Conference to be held in one location, as well as to allow each delegate at the conference to nominate five persons instead of one in line with the provisions of our party's constitution. In my humble and considered opinion, the decisions of the National Council were both unmeritorious and unconstitutional. To make matters worse, it was absolutely clear, as I indicated in my press statement of the 6th of September this year, that the Superdelegates Conference was strategically and tactically skewed and maneuvered in favor of one particular aspect. The level of intimidation and monetization that characterized the conference is unprecedented in the history of internal elections of our party. The subsequent decisions made by the National Council to vary the rules of procedure for the runoff arising from the Superdelegates Conference in direct contravention of both the constitution of the party and the guidelines which had been issued by the Presidential Primary Selections Committee will go down in history as a travesty of justice and a demonstration of high-handedness by the highest decision-making body of the party, second only to the Annual Delegates Conference. Fellow countrymen and women, I joined the new Patriotic Party at the very beginning of its establishment as a founding member, believing in its core values and the long-standing traditions of its antecedents, predicated on the principles of fairness, equity, probity, accountability, and transparency. I have devoted the best part of my professional career to serving the party, and I still believe in the vision of the founding fathers of the party. However, 
the NPP, as it exists now, has very little resemblance to the party that I joined in 1992 and helped to make. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The party has been hijacked by a selected group of party leaders and elders, government appointees, behind, behind the cutting power brokers and some unscrupulous party apparatchiks. It was my fervent wish it was my fervent wish to use the vehicle of their party to bring my God-given talents, experience, and knowledge applied both locally and internationally over a period of 46 years to serve our dear nation, Ghana, at the highest level of executive authority. It is abundantly clear to me that my services and contributions to the party are not appreciated. And that my continual stay in the party will create further tension and divisions, which is an exact replay of the circumstances that led to my decision to resign from the party in 2008. Fellow countrymen and women, under the circumstances and given the context provided, I wish to use this platform to announce that I'm honorably resigning with immediate effect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I repeat, under the circumstances and given the context provided, I wish to use this platform to announce that I'm honorably resigning with immediate effect from the new patriotic party to contest for the high office of the president of the Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you, thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, to contest, thank you very much, to contest for the high office of the President of the Republic of Ghana in the 2024 general elections as an independent presidential candidate.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. To, to actualize this goal, can we have some quietness, please? To actualize, to actualize this goal, I will establish and lead a new movement for change in Ghana. The brand logo for the movement is the Monarch Butterfly. Which, which politically symbolizes change and transformation, hope and positivity. It also communicates strength, endurance, spirituality and trust, which are all key traits that I cherish as a political leader. In Akan, it is known as Afrofanto. The brand motto of the movement is Ghana will rise again. Ghana, Ghana will rise again, which symbolizes hope for the future of Ghana. The new movement will be led and powered by the youth of Ghana. Out, out of the over 17 million registered voters in the 2020 general elections, the youth aged 18 to 35 years constituted over 9.4 million voters, representing 55% of the total voters. This is a constituency that you cannot ignore. It is acknowledged without doubt that the youth represent the future of our country, and yet they constitute the most vulnerable section of our society. From available statistics, 85% of all prison inmates in Ghana are aged between 12 and 35 years. This is profoundly alarming. Fellow countrymen and women, it is also worth noting that every year, over 300,000 graduates from tertiary institutions in Ghana, excluding those from secondary institutions, enter the job market with little or no hope of finding a job. Clearly, public sector employment is not an option with an already over bloated public service. This phenomenon of a pervasive employment crisis is gradually becoming a national security threat, as evidenced by the recent Occupy Jilobi House demonstrations. The initial reaction of the police in manhandling some protesters is not the solution to the problem. What What Ghana, what Ghana needs now is change, which will provide long-lasting solutions to the challenges confronting our country. Fellow countrymen and women, I'm using this platform to introduce myself to you, the good people of Ghana, and humbly seek your support to become the next president of the Republic of Ghana. I believe, I believe with unwavering conviction that I am the only leader who can guarantee the economic and industrial transformation of our country, the restoration of confidence in political leadership, and the, unif and the unification of an increasingly divided nation. My unique selling proposition as a leader is vision, competence, integrity, and action. The four dominant themes for this change agenda will be pursued, which will be pursued by the movement are as follows. One, change the political status quo by moving Ghana beyond the duopoly of the two main political parties the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress. This, this will break 
divisive partisanship in governance in Ghana and bring an end to the winner-takes-all political syndrome. In addition, there's a need to promote reforms in the internal democratic processes and procedures of all political parties, such as introducing one man, one vote to ensure inclusiveness and reduce the effect of monetization in politics. The principles underpinning our national elections must be reflected in the electoral processes of political parties in Ghana. Two, promote the establishment of a government of national unity, which would include people from all walks of life, irrespective of their political, religious, <laughs> ethnic affiliations. Rich, rich or poor, able-bodied or physically challenged, young or old women and men. This will allow for effective and inclusive participatory governance. The movement will lead the formation of a government of the people, by the people and for the people. <laughs> Number three, build consensus on a national development agenda which will introduce a new paradigm shift that moves Ghana from growth and stability to economic transformation. This paradigm shift will be driven by my great transformational plan, GTP for Ghana, which puts the private sector and the business community at the center of our national development efforts. Four, inspire behavioral and attitudinal change in the people of Ghana. This would include, but not be limited to the following. A, enforcement of discipline. We as a people should appreciate the need for maintaining discipline in all spheres of our national lives, including changing our attitude to work. B, a war against corruption. Corruption, particularly from the public purse, denies our country the benefit of using our tax revenue resources for the development of our country. All sections of the Ghanaian society should wage a vigorous war on corruption through a combination of legal and institutional reforms, the application of technology, including artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, and data analytics, as well as maintaining societal pressure against corruption and leading by example. If elected as the president of this republic, I will sign a citizen's contract with the people of Ghana, committing myself to wage a relentless war against corruption. <laughs> C. Arrogance of power. As I've stated on previous occasions, the arrogance of power has been a major obstruction to progress in our country. People in positions of authority in this country must understand that leadership is an opportunity to serve the people and not to lord over them. In servant leadership, humility is an asset and not a weakness. D, passion for excellence. As a country, we must celebrate competence and excellence and not mediocrity. Advancement in the public sector in particular must be based on meritocracy and not patronage and protocol. Putting square pegs in round holes has been the biggest challenge for service delivery at every level in our governance structure. A significant shift in this regard will allow the best talents in our country, particularly the youth, to be deployed to achieve optimum performance in various institutions and organizations. E, solution-based thinking and a focus on execution. As a people, we must focus more on getting things done and finding solutions to problems rather than spending time on excessive and leadless debates. F, 
making laws work in Ghana. The lack of compliance and disrespect for laws, rules, and regulations in Ghana is a major stumbling block for national development. As a people, we must commit ourselves to the sanctity and rule of law to ensure peace, law, and order in our country. Last but not the least, patriotism. The pride of being Ghanaian and promoting good citizenship, as well as patronizing made in Ghana goods, is a development imperative. Fellow countrymen and women, Ghana is at a crossroads, and the dynamics of our time requires a transformational leader. I believe that I am the leader for this time. I have, I have already put forward for the consideration of our country the Great Transformational Plan, GTP, which will significantly deal with poverty and bring prosperity to our nation. The GTP is anchored on ten pillars, namely, one, building a strong macroeconomic environment, which will be characterized by a stable currency, low inflation, sustainable debt levels, revenue optimization, tight expenditure control, low competitive interest rates, strong external reserves backed by high levels of liquidity to support the financial sector. Two, introduce a new agricultural revolution for Ghana, which will first take advantage of both local, regional, and global markets. Secondly, be driven by technology, innovation, and cutting-edge research. Thirdly, optimize value for farmers through value chains. And fourthly, promote economies of scale in agriculture through large-scale commercial farming. Three, promoting industrial transformation through value addition and the establishment of strategic anchor industries to diversify the Ghanaian economy. This will also involve the establishment of industrial parks and special economic zones, as well as the aggressive promotion of small and medium scale enterprises. Four, accelerated infrastructural development, promoting private sector financing for public infrastructure such as roads, railways, ports, harbors, water supply systems, public housing, etc. This will reduce government's exposure to the financing of such infrastructural projects. Five, digital mainstreaming. Mainstreaming digitization in all government and public sector activities and bringing digital technologies to the doorstep of the ordinary Ghanaian. Six, energy security and diversification. Placing greater emphasis on the development of renewable sources of energy, including but not limited to nuclear and hydrogen energy. This will require fast-tracking the execution of government's strategy for energy transition. Seven, health. Expanding health infrastructure and services by enhancing private sector participation in health service delivery across the country, as well as improving the viability of the National Health Insurance Scheme. Eight, education. Undertaking a comprehensive review of existing reforms in the educational sector, particularly the free SHS program, to ensure optimum efficiency and effectiveness in its implementation. Government will pay special attention to institutionalizing the link between industry, academia, and educational institutions and reinforce the importance of apprenticeship and internship. Considering the critical importance of early childhood education, the development of new industrial, new the development of new interventions in the educational sector 
will be to improve basic education in all its forms and nature, including but not limited to fiscal infrastructure, learning facilities, teacher training, and curriculum development. Nine, tourism. Encouraging private sector investments in the development of world-class tourism infrastructure and also taking steps to leverage the tourism potential in each district and region of our country. In addition, my government will facilitate air travel for tourists coming into the country by providing free visas, including visas on arrival. Finally, the development of the creative industry in Ghana will be the backbone of the reforms in the tourism industry. This will include, but not be limited to the following creative industries, film, dance, theater, music, literature, and multimedia arts. 10, natural resource management. Developing and implementing a comprehensive program for the management of Ghana's natural resources. This would include oil and gas, solid minerals, water and marine resources, and land and forest resources. As a target, there shall be no export of raw materials from Ghana in any form or nature without a minimum of 60% value addition by the year 2030. This will usher in Ghana's decade of industrial transformation spanning the year 2025 to 2035. 11. Decarbonization and climate resilience. Scaling up government's current efforts at reducing Ghana's carbon footprints and facilitating access to the carbon trading markets, as well as establishing mechanisms to strengthen the country's preparedness against the negative effects of climate change and climate variability. Twelve, national security and defense optimization. Deploying resources to strengthen national security and defense mechanisms and infrastructure to deal substantively with emerging security threats and challenges particularly in the Sahelian region. 13. Downsizing government. Overhauling the architecture of the public service in Ghana by consolidating some existing ministries, departments, and agencies. This will lead to a lean government structure that will ensure operational efficiency and effectiveness in the delivery, in the delivery of government services and also reduce costs to the national budget. 14. Strategic engagement with the international community. Restructuring Ghana's diplomatic and economic relations with the international community based on the principle of positive neutrality with a focus on promoting the strategic interests of Ghana as well as our shared commitment to humanity and the preservation of peace around the world. Last but not the least, sports. Investing in world-class new generation sports facilities in selected competitive sporting disciplines. In this regard, my government would encourage the participation of the private sector in the development of sports infrastructure around the country, including sports academies. The Great Transformational Plan, GTP, will provide jobs for the people, cash for the people. In conclusion, fellow countrymen and women, the concept of an independent candidate becoming the president of the Republic of Ghana, though Novel will be the most innovative and revolutionary development in Ghana's political history. <laughs> it 
it will indeed be a watershed development in Ghana. All those similar examples of this model have been practiced successfully in countries such as Benin in Africa and other political jurisdictions. In a country like Ghana, that is currently embroiled in divisive political turmoil, an independent candidate who becomes president will be a bipartisan and honest broker amongst different political parties and will bring healing and reconciliation to our body politics. Ministers and other key government officials will be appointed from all parties and shall also include and, and shall also include individuals who are apolitical but have a demonstrable and proven track record, record proven track record of performance in their field of specialization. Fellow countrymen and women. What Ghana needs now is a new leader and not a new political party. It is worth noting that the great nations of this world were built on the vision of great leaders and not on the back of political parties. There are multiple examples of such great leaders in political history around the world, including George Washington and Abraham Lincoln of the United States of America, Winston Churchill of Great Britain, Mahatma Gandhi of India, Lee Kuan Yew of Singapore, Deng Xiaoping of China, and Dr. Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. In the current political dispensation of Ghana, under an executive presidency, the president of the republic represents one constituency, only one constituency, which is the constituency of Ghana. <laughs> while, while different political parties can contest for parliamentary seats on the ticket of their political parties, Electing an independent candidate as president who will lead a government of national unity will not only bring harmony to the legislature but also facilitate the approval and execution of government programs and projects. Who better can moderate and lead such a political divide than an independent candidate who has no direct ties with any existing political party? Fellow countrymen and women, I wish to use this opportunity to assure the rank and file of the new patriotic party that I still very much cherish my relationship with you and I'm committed to the ideals of the founding fathers of the party. My decision to contest as an independent, independent candidate will not destroy the party, but rather provide the party an opportunity to participate in the government of national unity in the future. And, 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 and avoid the risk of going into opposition with no dividends in what arguably will be a difficult general election in 2024. You can vote for your preferred choice of MPP parliamentary candidate, but vote for Alan John Kogodjamate. <laughs> but vote for Alan John. But vote for Alan John Martin in the presidential elections in December 2024 to become the sixth president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana. To the rank and file, to the rank and file and sympathizers of the National Democratic Congress (NDC), and to my friends in leadership positions in the NDC, please note that if elected as president, I will also be president for NDC. You, you will be better off avoiding the risk 
of remaining in opposition if you do not win the 2024 general election. Rather, participate in the government of national unity by voting for Alan Martin as president of Ghana in December 2024. To the rank and file, to the rank and file, and my friends in the smaller parties and other political organizations, including the national interest movement, please let us join hands to unite Ghana for our collective benefit. Fellow countrymen and women, I will in the coming weeks conduct a formal launch of my campaign. And And provide further details. And provide further details of my great transformational plan. Subsequent to the launch event and in the coming months, you will see me in your communities around the country, in your lecture halls, at, at, at our music, at our music concerts, in our churches, in, in our mosques, on your streets at the market centers, at the fishing ports, at our truck row and taxi stations, on your farms, and in every corner of our society. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am determined to hear the voice of the people in this movement for change. I invite every Ghanaian citizen to join me in this movement. In particular for the youth of Ghana, this is your chance. This is your chance to take control of power and authority in this country and shape the course of your own future. Together, we will win and Ghana will rise again. Together we will reign and Ghana will rise again. Together we will reign and Ghana will rise again. Fellow countrymen and women, it will be an honor and privilege to serve you as the next president of the Republic of Ghana. God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. I thank you for your kind attention. Alan speaks. Alan speaks. Alan do a tell for channel I share video. We also a pen dream TV in Pacho. What share we? I didn't tell you I will have a video. You know, be on a send by a wall. 0277128777. 0277128777. One two eight seven seven seven. Oh, what's up, na man? So send your voice, nebra. Nebra, bomba gana for you na ati wonka. Eh, then you come. I'm in the pending TVs. Yeah, so far so good. Se open online portal e what gana. Ah, you pa share, you pa follow, you pa comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I pending TV.